Uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, Alan Lewis to the uh, podium. Alan is the uh, director of the Global Logistics Emissions Council, GLEC, at the Smart Freight Center. Um, and they are working to develop uh, a harmonized framework for carbon uh, footprint calculations for the freight sector. And it'd be interesting to hear uh, your contributions today. Alan, thank you. Thanks very much, Todd. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as you heard, I'm uh, Alan Lewis, uh, Smart Freight Centre. Um, and I'm going to give a, a bit of a whistle-stop um, tour of the work that we've been doing um, over the past three years, um, working on harmonizing the approach to carbon footprinting um, in the logistics sector. So Smart Freight Centre is uh, an NGO um, based out of Amsterdam and we have a focus very much on sustainability and improving uh, energy efficiency uh, and environmental sustainability um, within that uh, global uh, logistics sector. And we do that with um, focus on three separate programs. Um, at highest level we, we look at Smart Freight Leadership which um, focuses on making linkages at a global level between the activities um, that are ongoing, um, making sure that uh, freight transport isn't overlooked, um, as is sometimes the case, um, and really making the link between um, policy, um, existing initiatives, um, and corporate leadership, because ultimately that's um, really important in the freight sector to uh, get something done. We have the Global Logistics Emissions Council, which is going to be the focus of, uh, of the rest of my presentation. Um, and then specifically within the road sector, we have something called the Smart Trucks Platform, which is looking at implementation of quick wins to, to bring about change in the sector. And we're taking very much um, a global approach to um, logistics uh, emission accounting. Um, and there, there are various reasons um, for that, um, not least, as has um, been mentioned many times, the, uh, the adoption of uh, the agreement from COP21, which commits the, the governments but also individual sectors to, to really working towards um, mitigating, limiting the, the, uh, the emissions um, and re now keeping that... Uh, that overall change in terms of overall climate to as, as small amount as possible. Um, and as we've already heard, the, um, the challenge is that there's a lot of work going on in terms of reducing carbon intensity, but from a logistics perspective, uh, growing economic demand at global level um, is actually um, increasing the amount of freight transport required, um, and the projections for the future um, actually show that total to be a significant increase, which actually means that if you want to uh, contribute from a logistics sector perspective, some of the, uh, the intensity reductions that are required, you're looking at uh, sort of 70, 80, 90%, which is a, a huge challenge. Uh, you also have the, the issue that um, the, the global economic demand is also causing an increase um, in many of the logistic chains. And um, what that does is bring increased complexity. But that complexity in terms of the opportunity for different use of different transport modes is actually an opportunity as well. But it's an opportunity that you can only really capture if you understand in a consistent way the emissions that come from the different modes. And that's really the origin of the work that we've been doing um, within the GLEC over the, the last two or three years. If you rewind maybe seven or eight years ago, there was a, uh, not very much in the way of guidance available for organizations in the transport sector as to how to carbon footprint their activities. Um, and um, as a result of that, not surprisingly, a lot of people then thought, well, there's a gap to fill and suddenly you move to a situation where there's almost too much guidance out there. And so for uh, a, a company wanting to, uh, to, to work in this area, 
um, you, you get a situation where they're almost blinded by the different initiatives. Um, some of these come from individual um, regions or from the different mode perspectives, um, possibly from different sectors, maybe from public sector perspective, um, from uh, development banks and the like. And <clears throat> it, it, there was very much a, a need identified um, by the industry to actually get a grip on this and to, to look for coordination um, of approach. Uh, a real need to compare um, things on a like-to-like -like basis because it's only when you can do that you can really support um, true decision making and make, um, make the, the, the decisions on a, on a basis that is meaningful and then track the changes over time. Uh, and with that in mind, um, the, GLEC, the Global Logistics Emissions Council was established in uh, 2014 um, with a view to actually drive emission reduction and enhance uh, energy efficiency and, and emissions performance across global logistics supply chains. And that was done very much from an industry-led perspective. Um, the way that we're looking to achieve that is to have an industry-led collaboration um, and we're really looking to establish uh, and implement that, uh, that framework for calculation, but then use that to, to drive emission reduction through business decisions. So in, question, in terms of who's involved, our stakeholders are um, individual companies operating uh, primarily at the global level, uh, green freight programs, which um, are one way in which they collaborate both um, among themselves, but also with other stakeholders, including um, the public policy um, side of things. Um, and then industry associations as well. We also have um, a selection of experts that we bring in to provide specific advice um, uh, in terms of our, our technical work. And we also have a, a wider group of consultees, again, um, companies and associations, but also um, other organizations that give that, uh, that broader perspective to help shape the, the, the work of the industry going forward. So after um, around two years of development work um, and uh, a lot of consultation, the, the first version of the, uh, the GLEC framework for logistics emissions methodologies was launched uh, last June. Um, and the ov overarching perspective on this was try to bring four principles together. It's really important that we, tr we keep this as simple as possible because it is in itself a very complex topic. And if you actually, if you don't make it simple and easy to use, it's very easy to lose um, your businesses, your opportunity to actually make it work to get the calculations right. Very important to have transparency in order to gain trust of your, <coughs> of your potential users. And there's a real balance in terms of accuracy. Um, and what we've realized is that it's very important to, to go for a level of accuracy that's required in order to support decision making rather than necessarily to go for pinpoint accuracy because that in itself is what brings a lot of the complexity. With all that, you also need to have the flexibility to meet the needs of all players, um, both the, the purchasers of transport but also the organizations that then deliver it. Um, and there's a very clear um, parallel um, in the position of the ports and then the businesses that are um, actively um, present as the tenants of the ports um, who maybe have a, a greater ownership of the actual energy use uh, and emissions um, in the port area. In terms of scope, um, we're, we're very much um, focused on trying to get as big a picture uh, and as complete a picture as possible. So although we're talking about carbon footprinting, very much focused on including all um, the Kyoto Protocol gases. Um, so we're you know, really functioning uh, at the greenhouse gas level. Um, and also trying to bring in full life cycle emissions or the well to wheel uh, of the various fuels. And that's very important in order to fully understand the potential impact of new, fu new fuels um, or electricity as, uh, as uh, compared to uh, the traditional liquid fuels. And we're 
again, looking at things, trying to bring the, the activities um, for the various modes and transshipment centres together into one place. Um, we've had action groups in each of these areas, um, looking at what's, what's available, what exists. Um, and the framework is very much based, once you've got a, 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 a reasonable level of comparability in terms of a technical level um, uh, for the carbon footprint calculation, then it's very much a question of understanding um, what is already being used by, um, by the industry from its own bottom-up perspective and what is trusted by the industry. Um, as a result, we've built the framework uh, around a number of base methodologies within version one. Um, that said, there is still development work ongoing and particularly relevant um, to, the, to the group of um, organizations represented here today, as hopefully I'll bring out shortly. It's worth noting that the GLEC framework is um, uh, supported by Greenhouse Gas Protocol. We carry the, uh, the built-on Greenhouse Gas Protocol mark, uh, and that really sets us as the annex for the logistics sector. Um, and new for 2017 also, the GLEC framework is represented within um, the CDP reporting. So if you follow GLEC, you'll be able to indicate that this year. In terms of specifics to the, the, the audience here today, um, I think it's very important to, to recognize we have an ongoing um, dialogue with the IAPH, and that's very important to us. Um, but given that the, that the following speaker is going to talk about IAPH's um, uh, WPCI initiative, um, I've tried to steer clear of that one a little bit and talk instead um, about an MOU that we've recently signed with Feeport um, as the European representative organization for the terminal operators or the tenants within the port. Um, Feeport has uh, adopted recently guidance written by terminal operators, um, written about four years ago now, um, but looking really to understand and work with them, um, how practical is the implementation? Because ideally, what we would like to do is to bring um, some specific and updated guidance into the next version uh, of the GLEC framework. And I think what we would like to do is to bring um, something which is relevant both to the terminal operators and to the ports and is up to date within version 2 um, of the GLEC framework which we're, we're aiming to produce back end of 2018. And so we're, we're working with Feeport's Environment Committee um, and some of the, uh, the various ports and their terminals um, to do those sorts of tests and case studies um, during the course of 2017. I also just wanted to highlight very quickly a UN initiative um, that was actually developed by the Economic Commission for um, Central and Latin America, who have a, a free online tool for data collection for terminals, originally out of the container terminal sector, but now um, updated um, to include um, other types of terminals, general terminals, bulk, bulk terminals. Um, this offers the opportunity to to collect or input your data online, um, to track your own emissions, and if you're interested, to try to benchmark against other terminals from around the world. And it's, it seems to be picking up momentum um, at the global level from the container terminal sector, certainly. There's about 10 years' worth of, of data now there. The other aspect to our work then, um, and now the topic of inland waterways, um, Something that we're, we're about to do is, is to relaunch the Inland Waterways Action Group within GLEC. We see a need to, to combine the existing practice within the Inland Waterways sector with the high-level um, greenhouse gas accounting principles that we've, we've established within the GLEC framework. The approach is very similar to what's been done in the other sectors. Um, to get together a small working group of committed organizations who actually can give their time, have something to bring. Um, our approach is not to try to have big uh, committees of people who come along um, and, and, uh, and, and sort of sit and look. We would want the people who've got the time and the knowledge um, to, to really bring in on the methodology side of things. We're likely to launch that uh, towards the second half of May this year, 
um, and follow that up with an in-person meeting later in 2017. Um, so I think one key takeaway is if you're in the inland water, waterway sector and you would want to be involved, then please speak to me later. I'm around for the rest of the day. Or if that doesn't work out, you can always um, email myself or the GLEC coordinator, Kate, uh, and the email address is shown. The way that we're going to be judged as GLEC this year is very much about implementation of what's in the framework. We're working with um, our first eight implementers who've signed up to adopt the, the GLEC framework within their operations. Um, we're continually looking to increase this. But as you can see, we've got some big industrial names there um, who have committed in their own way, and they all have different mechanisms for it, to, to making this change. And uh, finally, um, as I say, this has been very much a, a whistle-stop tour, but we are involved in leading um, a European Commission-funded network, uh, and we actually have a workshop back in Brussels um, next week on Tuesday and Wednesday where we're going to be looking in much more detail at the, the issues around carbon footprinting in the um, freight and logistics sector and what the links are with, uh, with the measurements through to decision making, reduction, certification uh, and potentially the role of, um, of carbon footprint labelling or other environmental labelling. So, um, for more detail, and if you're around next week, then um, we'd love to see you there as well. Thank you.